Welcome back to the guided study of Romeo and Juliet. Now remember, we're in Act 3. In Scene 1, Romeo killed Tybalt because Tybalt killed Mercutio. Because of all of this, Romeo has been banished from Verona, never to return. We still don't know where Romeo is because he ran off somewhere after he killed Tybalt. Today we're going to read Scene 2. Now in scene two, we're back at the Capulet's place. We're in the Capulet orchard and we're gonna see Juliet. Now remember, this is the same day that Romeo and Juliet got married. So what Juliet is doing is she's waiting for Romeo to come so that they can consummate their marriage. So she's waiting for it to be night. Now, I love my cousin, but she rambles a lot. So we're gonna skip like 20 of the lines that she says at the start of the scene, and I'm just gonna tell you what they're about. So at the start of the scene, my cousin Juliet is comparing Knight to many things, and she's talking about how nervous and excited she is to be with Romeo as man and wife. So she's waiting and she's waiting and she's saying all of these gross, disgusting things, and then the nurse is gonna come back. Now, remember, Juliet still hasn't heard about what happened on the streets of Verona. She hasn't heard that I died and that Romeo's been banished, but the nurse who's been outside the castle, been outside the palace, the property, has heard. So the nurse is coming back and she's going to deliver Juliet the news. But the nurse is really upset about everything that's happened, so she doesn't deliver the news very well. So I want you to pay attention to how Juliet responds to the nurse's news that she brings. So I want you to skip the first 20 lines. Start reading scene two on line 21, read all the way to line 63. Go ahead and pause me now and read lines 21 to 63. All right. So starting on line 21, Juliet is begging the knight to come. She's like, come gentle knight, give me my Romeo. And then she says this goopy stuff, take him and cut him out in little stars and he will make the face of heaven so fine that all the world will be in love with night and pay no worship to the garrison. She's like, oh, cut, cut Romeo out, put him in the sky and everybody will love the night because he's so beautiful. And then she's talking about how long the day is and how slow the hours are going by. And then the nurse enters. And then, and she asked the nurse on line 35, now nurse, what news? And the nurse throws down the cords, which are gonna be used for the rope ladder so Romeo can climb up to Juliet's window. And Juliet on line 38 says, I me, what news? Why dost thou wring thy hands? Well, the nurse just starts saying, he's dead, he's dead, he's dead, he's dead, he's dead. Of course, the nurse is talking about me. But Juliet thinks that she's talking about Romeo and she starts getting really upset and Juliet is trying to figure out what is going on because the nurse just can't talk because the nurse is so upset. So the nurse on line 55 is like, I saw the wound, I saw it with my eyes, here on his manly breast, a piteous corpse. So he, the nurse is talking about wounds and talking about blood and corpses. And she doesn't answer Juliet's question as to whether or not Romeo's dead. So Juliet is really upset here. She's like, oh, my heart, my heart, my heart is breaking. And on line 63, Juliet says, thou and Romeo press one heavy beer. So she's basically like, I will die if Romeo has died. Another instance here of foreshadowing. Now, in this next section, the nurse is actually going to tell Juliet what happened. She's composing herself enough to get the words out. And I want you to see how Juliet reacts to the news that her new husband just killed her beloved cousin and now is banished. So go ahead and pause me now and read to line 102. All right, so the nurse finally gets her words out here. She says on line 64, O oh, Tybalt, O oh, Tybalt, line 66, that ever I should live to see thee dead. And Juliet says, is Romeo slaughtered and Tybalt dead? And the nurse says, no, line 72, Tybalt is gone and Romeo banished. Romeo that killed him, he is banished. So the nurse finally tells Juliet what's going on. And Juliet on line 76 starts bashing Romeo. 
She's talking about Romeo with metaphors and she's using things that are evil hidden by good looks in comparison to Romeo. So on line 76, she says, Oh, serpent heart hid with a flower in fits. Did ever dragon keep so fair a cave? Beautiful tyrant, fiend angelic, dove feathered raven. So all of these things that look beautiful on the outside but are evil on the inside. So basically she's saying Romeo is beautiful on the outside but evil on the inside. So she's really being quite mean to Romeo. Not that I care. And the nurse then kind of picks up on this bashing of Romeo. And on line 94, the nurse says, shame come to Romeo. So she's like, how dare he? Shame on him. And Juliet snaps at the nurse. She's like, 95, blistered be thy tongue for such a wish. So Juliet does a complete 180 here. First she was bashing Romeo, and now she's like, don't speak bad of my husband. And then she kind of reprimands herself for speaking so bad of him. And says on line 100, oh, what a beast I was to chide of him. And the nurse asks, would you speak well of him that killed your cousin? And Juliet has this line, shall I speak ill of him that is my husband? So she's just reminding us that she and Romeo are indeed married. Now in this next section, Juliet is going to try to reconcile her thoughts with what Romeo has done. So she's going to try to justify Romeo's actions. So I want you to see how she tries to justify those actions. And then there's going to be a plan that is put in place. So I want you to read to the end of scene two. Go ahead and pause me now. All right, you read to the end of scene two. So right away in this section, we find out exactly how long Romeo and Juliet has been married. On line 104, Juliet says, when I, thy three hours wife, Romeo and Juliet have only been married for three hours at this point. And then Juliet starts kind of coming up with all of these rationalizations for why Romeo killed me. She says in line 106, that villain cousin, oh, she called me a villain, rude. That villain cousin would have killed my husband. So she's like, well, if Romeo hadn't killed Tybalt, Tybalt would have killed him, which I would have. And then on line 110, Juliet says, my husband lives that Tybalt would have slain and Tybalt's dead that would have slain my husband. All this is comfort, wherefore then I weep. So she's trying to make herself feel better. But then she remembers that Romeo's banished. On line 118, she says, that banished, that one word banished hath slain 10,000 Tybalt. So she's like, Romeo being banished is worse than Tybalt dying 10,000 times. Dude, cuz that is so rude. I'm gonna haunt Juliet. I'm gonna haunt her. I'm gonna haunt her. So then she continues on and she's continuing to talk about how bad Romeo being banished is. On line 127, she's like, Romeo is banished to speak that word as father, mother, Tybalt, Romeo, Juliet, all slain and all dead. So she's like, Romeo being banished is worse than me, my mom, my dad, Tybalt, and Romeo all being dead. She's like, I would rather we were all dead than Romeo be banished. Yo, girl is being real dramatic right now. Real dramatic. And then she says on line 141, all to my wedding bed and death, not Romeo, take my maidenhead. So she, again here, is foreshadowing her death. She's like, my wedding bed is going to be my death bed. And the nurse trying to comfort Juliet says, I'll find Romeo to comfort you. I won't well where he is. So the nurse is like, I think I know where Romeo is. I'll go get him and have him come here and comfort you. And the nurse says on line 146, he is hid at Lawrence's cell. So we find out that Romeo fled to Friar Lawrence's cell to hide. At the end of the scene, Juliet takes off her ring to give to the nurse for the nurse to give to Romeo. She says, oh, find him, give this ring to my true knight and bid him come to take his last farewell. So Juliet's giving Romeo this ring as just a token to show Romeo that I still love you. I still want to be your wife and please come to me. And that's the end of scene two. Make sure you subscribe to the Bear Bodkin Barn to be updated on all of the latest stories. Now get thee gone!